All right, for today's recording on lodging, I'm gonna talk about our less common forms of lodging, which are gonna be based around Airbnbs, uh, campgrounds, um, trying to look up the information for that and, and gearing it towards what will you need for your project as far as the information on those slides, but also just kind of for your own sakes in the future when you ultimately go to these things, these ones will actually probably be more typical for you early on in your lifetime uh, for your booking. They tend to be a little bit more cheap, a little more affordable, um, and more accessible for that matter uh, than a lot of the hotels that you're probably going to come across uh, when you search for those things. Okay, so Airbnb, uh, this is something that you can actually become a host as well in the future when you ultimately, if you own your own home in the future, uh, you can become a host for other people that want to book those sorts of things. Essentially, uh, they're what we call vacation rentals or um, uh, what has happened in the past before Airbnb existed, you had people that owned homes and probably owned multiple homes and they were gonna be away from their second homes or vacation homes for extended periods of time. And they thought, hey, why not make some money? And I'll say like, all right, well, I'm, if they had a home in Big Bear and a home in Palm Desert, for instance, they were like, well, I live in Palm Desert during the winter. So I'll rent out my spot during like the holiday months uh, of winter and you know, I'll make some money on the side. It was a nice business plan. And so Airbnb came along and they just kind of organized a bunch of these people that had these um, these thoughts about creating a vacation rental and they've just made a platform for it. So if at some point in the future, you're thinking about what are some kind of interesting ways to make money on the side, if you own a home, this is a neat way to do it. There are lots of other complicated things that come along with that and things to be aware of. Um, for instance, if you were trying to do this on your own, one thing you gotta be aware of is like, what happens if you got someone that like, rented out your spot for a couple of days and then they just decided, no, I'm going to stay. Okay. A unique problem that vacation renters uh, definitely have to be aware of. Uh, the nice thing about Airbnb, they handle all that business. Uh, they take a cut of it to handle like the security and the cleanup and all that kind of good stuff too. Uh, many of you are probably already familiar with some of the Airbnb properties up here in Big Bear. Um, maybe you even like live next door to some, uh, but for again, the sake of this project, when you go about booking Airbnbs, essentially what you're doing is you are booking someone's home, okay? Why would that be something you might wanna consider? There are several reasons why you might wanna go Airbnb versus hotel, right? Uh, first off, the nice thing about being in, in a private home is you tend to have a little bit more of the creature comforts of a home. Uh, whether that be multiple bathrooms that you might not get in a single hotel room. Uh, if you're traveling with a group of people, it might be nicer because you have more places to sleep, a little bit more comfort for like, all right, we get a little bit more elbow room, more space to enjoy ourselves. With a hotel, you typically get a sterilized, like here's just like, here's your bed, here's a bathroom, that's what you get. Okay, uh, there are exceptions to that rule, obviously, but with Airbnb, you kind of guarantee you get a little bit more of those comforts. And again, the nice thing here too would be maybe you choose this because it's a residential neighborhood, has its own kind of vibe, its own kind of, um, I don't know, like quietude. It's a, like a different a different kind of atmosphere being in a residential area at an Airbnb versus in a hotel where you're packed in with maybe thousands of other people at a given resort. Uh, and so again, a lot of those things are attractive to people. They tend to be more expensive than hotels, but where that balances out is if you have, again, a group you're traveling with, if you're going with five other people and six of you are in this Airbnb, you obviously split costs six different ways. And, and now you've kind of found a way to save money on that. Uh, six people in a hotel room is a lot more expensive than a lot of people think. So anyway, uh, for the information you would require for this project, again, you're gonna be, um, caring about like uh, the dates you're staying. Um, uh, weekends typically are more expensive than weekdays, the, the, all that good stuff. Nice thing about this website when you're exploring it, uh, you know, they give you like lots of options like to just explore, um, you know, given areas, regions that are local, whatever it might be. Uh, you can look at different types of Airbnbs. Here's another unique thing that hotels don't really offer you would have to find a very unique hotel to go to in order to get like this unique experience. Whereas with Airbnb, a lot of these homes are unique in and of themselves. So that all of them have their own little like snowflake fingerprint or whatever you want to call it. So you can look for a cabin specific type of living or this uh, unique stay that you see right here where uh, you've got like this 
weird golf ball looking structure out in the middle of the desert or um, tiny homes. Or so if you had a pet traveling with you, a lot of hotels don't allow you to have pets. So that might be a way to kind of bypass that as well. Again, lots of things that uh, Airbnb has to offer. Um, anyway, I'll let you kind of explore that for right now, the pieces that you're going to care about, where are you going? For instance, here, if I want to do something in, say, San Luis Obispo, all right, uh, I type in the location. Um, and then again, I will go with my dates. So for the sake of these examples, I've been doing this during our spring break. Uh, let's say again, I am want to do four nights and I'll do from March 28th through April 1st. OK, so I'm checking in March 28th, checking out April 1st. Um, and, and here's the nice thing about Airbnb is it does give you a little bit of wiggle room. So for particularly for you guys when you're planning this like way far out in advance from when you would actually do this, you can give them a plus or minus like, for instance, the plus or minus seven days is like saying like, I'm OK with some flexibility, like give or take a week around this time. So in other words, if you, it was like a summer trip where you just know like, hey, I'm free after I graduate. Me and my friends were like, we, we have time at that point. So we would like to go maybe for 4th of July weekend, but frankly, we would just like to go to this place. So we'll say like plus or minus a week to just say like, is there anything available in and around that day? That, that, that's a nice thing about this. Or you can get a little bit tighter and you're like oh, give or take a day. We, we definitely want to be within this time period, uh, but we're okay if we want to like shift the day for pricing reasons or whatever. So it gives you that option. Um, I'll go ahead and search exact dates. Um, uh, actually, why not? Let's see what happens when I do plus or minus seven days. And then uh, I can add guests for the sake of this project. We're just doing it solo. But again, if you and like three of your friends are traveling, you'd say plus three guests, that sort of thing, or four total. Okay. And so again, I search San Luis Obispo. All this stuff will come up. All right. So again, let me just talk about really briefly what's the difference between Airbnb, these vacation rentals versus a hotel. Very first thing that pops up, this beach house on Cayucos Beach. Um, it's not exactly in San Luis Obispo, but the nice thing here is that I can move this map around. Maybe I'm just kind of generally looking in a, a given region and I'm okay with something a little bit more on the outskirts. You'll typically find a little bit more of that stuff um, when it comes to your own searches and stuff. Uh, one thing I wanna mention here is that uh, many of you at some point in the future will be doing events. And what do I mean by events? Like, uh, like if you've, like, like myself, I've been uh, a best man for several weddings. Um, uh, many of you will do the same for your own weddings, maybe in the future, or other events, whether it be reunions or uh, like a family, uh, family kind of outing, whatever it might be. And kind of the neat thing about an Airbnb versus a, a hotel you can get some pretty unique locations. Like this very top one right here is a beach house where you're literally right on this Cayucos beach. And they, they give you a little bit of the, the names of it, uh, the um, amenities of it. And the thing to notice here is like that 589 bucks a night. If you're looking for a hotel room, right? You're gonna find stuff a lot cheaper than 589 a night. Right, you'd find nice rooms for a lot cheaper than five eighty nine a night. But why would you consider the five eighty nine a night one? Because again, if you're doing something like say a bachelorette party or a bachelor party or a family reunion or something where it's just like you and your friends are treating yourself to a graduation celebration, whatever it might be, and you're like, there's going to be six of us staying in the spot. Well, six of us in a hotel room is pretty cramped, and also a hotel will typically charge you more to have that many guests in that room. So you might get to that price anyway. But now when you go to like six people, now that dividing that by six, you're dealing with a little bit less than a hundred bucks per person per night, which is a little bit more on standard than with like a kind of like a whatever hotel motel. But instead you get a beach house. Get what I'm saying? Right. And so again, th there are other options here, but this is just the most expensive one. It was rated really high. Uh, ratings for this location. If you wanted to kind of see images, you can scroll through it. It's literally right on the beach. Um, kind of nice, like a nice spot, a nice little beach house. If you wanted to like throw yourselves a party, uh, that sort of thing, this looks like a pretty special place to do that. And 
again, the um, one of the features that you would not get at a hotel room is typically the casual creature comfort type of living amenities. For instance, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Having two bathrooms, if six people are staying somewhere, is kind of a necessity. And uh, particularly if you're going with a group of people, having multiple bathrooms is something you would typically not get at a hotel room, not unless you got a super expensive suite where you're gonna be spending that amount of money, uh, money anyway. And again, you're gonna be packed into a hotel with other people. Uh, and especially if you're in this kind of trip, you're trying to go to the beach anyway, this kind of kills two birds in the same go because you get your own little kind of private beach right next to it. So again, that's the kind of cool thing um, with Airbnb. Feel free to just kind of explore that. This is definitely something I've used several times in my lifetime, um, both as a best man booking places for bachelor parties where we just want to kind of get away from it all. That beach house looks like an awesome spot to just kind of hang out with the fellows. Um, or if you want to do something like inner city, there are Airbnbs that are kind of within a city, like New York city, you could find stuff that is like right next to, uh, times square or central park. Okay. And now you're more centralized as opposed to trying to find a hotel that might be the same price anyway. And then you got to deal with all the other, um, all the other stuff with that. Okay. So, um, and, and again, another kind of interesting one right here, you got pet friendly homes. And stuff like that. So if this is something you're doing in the future where you have pets that need to travel with you, a lot of hotels just draw a line there. They just don't allow it. And in that case, something like this is kind of a necessity, right? So that's Airbnb. Again, I just want to do a general overview. There's a lot more stuff there to explore. Take the time, explore it. All right. Now, what about campgrounds? All right. So obviously you can search campgrounds. I went ahead and looked up a couple different ones. Um, some unique instances that you're going to run into some unique issues that you're going to run into, particularly now uh, are geared around the pandemic. Okay. So for instance, I looked up Yosemite booking a campground at Yosemite, you'll get these kinds of messages and Yosemite is not the only place, but particularly in California, we're going to run into this a lot. You're going to get a lot of park closures. In other words, they're not going to accept reservations right now. So if you're looking for quoted prices, you might need to do clever Google searching for like, what has it cost in the past, All right? Another thing to keep in mind, particularly with the national parks, they tend to be very popular. So for your own references in the future, if for instance, you were a big fan of Yosemite and you wanna travel there with friends or whatever it might be, you need to be pretty on top of when reservations are open. They don't last very long. For something as popular as Yosemite, definitely during certain times of the year, namely in like the spring or the fall. Why those times? Summer can get a little warm. Uh, the nice thing about spring is that you get the thaw of the snow. So all the waterfalls are a little extra full and stuff. Um, during the fall, you get the color changing in the leaves. Those tend to be the kind of the, the really popular times to go. It's not, uh, and the winter can get very cold. So particularly for like tent camping, it can be a little rough. But in any of those cases, uh, if you're trying to book for a specific time, like you were trying to book for say fall break next year, which again would be a very popular time to go and something where uh, you might have the actual time to do it, you'd be very, very want to be very conscientious about when that reservation window opens. And so being able to get alerts from the site uh, as to when those windows open and then being quick on the trigger to, to book a site, that's how you'd be able to pull it off. But I know for a fact that there tend to be like long waiting lists, and uh, particularly with Yosemite, that sort of thing can be a difficult task to do. It's not as simple as like going on for any hotel and being like, yeah, sure, I'll go for the weekend of 4th of July or something. Um, especially if you're trying to do it um, after the peak season has already come or after people have already had the ability to book stuff up because it goes very quickly at Yosemite. But I just wanted to show you this again because particularly right now with the pandemic going on, uh, a lot of parks national parks particularly will be closed and not be accepting reservations at all. So I went ahead and looked up Yos, uh, not Yosemite, Yellowstone as well. So this is Yellowstone. So you'll notice it looks very similar. Uh, Yellowstone, for those that don't know, don't know it's uh, Montana, Idaho uh, region, um, North Midwest area. Anyway, um, uh, and Wyoming, I just saw it right there. Uh, the National Park Service is a federal program. So the website itself is actually all the same. It's just a matter of which national park you want to look at. So if you are interested in national park campgrounds uh, or even lodging for like hotels and stuff like that, you would typically have to go through a website like this. Okay. 
Um, and so if you want to reserve spots in say Yellowstone, okay, um, they have lodges. So like if you need the hotel rooms or if you want to actually just tent camp it, stuff like that, uh, you can look for those sorts of things. These websites have a lot of good stuff too. So for, for instance, I'll go more into detail on this tomorrow when we talk about activities, but here's a lot of the activity stuff right here. So if you're trying to like get a boat, if you're trying to get a permit to catch fish or hunt or um, ride a horse, go backpacking. Um, I know at Yosemite, kind of a moot point because they're not taking reservations right now, but at Yosemite, if you want to like scale half dome rock, uh, you can do that um, you, using like rappelling gear and uh, uh, mountain climbing gear and stuff like that, that you can, you need permits to do that. And you do like little background checks and stuff. But anyway, you can find that stuff linked to this sort of thing. So if you wanted to camp in a campground, I clicked on that link earlier and it brought me to this spot. Uh, a lot of, again, national parks will tend to be very, very popular. So you're going to get uh, very little availability. You can actually see that even uh, here for Yellowstone National Park, a lot of them are already booked up or just not available. There was a single location up here way north uh, that was available. So if you were to click on that for Mammoth Campground, just to kind of see uh, where it's at, it shows you just relative maybe to like if more was available, you could pick and choose based on like what your own preferences or knowledge was. Um, but here's where you can see some of the pricing stuff, campground details. All right, here's your nightly fees. And again, if you're trying to do budget vacation trips, camping is a great way to do that. Um, many of you will have family or friends that have things like fifth wheels or trailers, RVs, whatever it might be. And so those will have different pricing uh, information Okay, and uh, you can see uh, the, the different kind of distinctions here. I'll let you kind of look through that stuff. Uh, a lot of these will be RV information. So, for instance, um, uh, let's see, the actual tent camping and stuff. Um, sorry, lost my train of thought. Um, you can use the same prices. Uh, tent camping typically will be a little bit cheaper than RV camping. Um, but as you can see, like when you're talking about 20 to 30 bucks a night, very different than an Airbnb at hundreds of dollars per night, depending on what location you're going for, or even a hotel at hundreds of dollars per night. A lot cheaper, uh, especially if you like camping. It, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's pretty cheap to do. Um, I, and it's a very popular retirement thing. My father-in-law and uh, mother-in-law are huge fans of taking their, uh, their fifth wheel to these campgrounds and just hanging out for like a month at a time because it's so cheap compared to hotels and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, feel free to explore that stuff. That's where you would find that pricing information. There are different campgrounds. Um, really quickly, there's this one, an RV resort campground called Flying Flags. It's up near uh, Central California, San Luis Obispo, solving and all that kind of stuff. If you wanted to uh, explore the different uh, types of spots, you can have, they have a bunch of tiny homes in this location you can see there. But if you wanted to book, um, again, you're gonna run into issues with availability, um, particularly in California due to the pandemic. So some of these things might be difficult to find information specifically on. You might need to do a Google search to find out like what it would be nightly on some other night, that sort of thing. But I'll let you guys kind of explore that. Again, just kind of, oh, not, not the year. Let's go 28th to April 1st. One adult, All right? And RV sites, cabins, cottages, lodges, glamping. Let's go with that. Again, all these different things. And if you're trying to find where these things are located, Google searches for campgrounds. Uh, KOA is a, um, uh, uh, a, a like a, a series, like, a, like a, a brand name, so to speak, of campgrounds. You can search their websites, uh, whatever it might be. Um, but if you have questions on any of that, feel free to ask. This one's taking a while to load. So uh, I'll go ahead and kill this guy. Anyway, I'll go ahead and stop recording there.